live fascinated. Welcome to Finding America. I'm on a 13,000 mile road trip to meet Finnish Americans and figure out why they want to be here and learn about cultural differences. You'll meet exciting Finns and hear about their journeys in America. We are on the way to Seattle. Day 8. Let's go. After meeting Villa in Portland, it was time to head out to Seattle. I heard a Finn had been featured in a Nordic museum and thus I had to meet this person. She is no other than Kristina Hiukka, Knight of the White Rose and Consul General of Finland. She hosted me for my Seattle stay and we had this discussion as soon as I arrived in the night, right before dinner. As a coach, Christina helps executives reach new heights. Oh, before we get on with the show, it would mean the world to me and it would help me creating content like this in the future if you could subscribe, smash the like button and maybe share this with a friend. See you next time. My name is Christina Hyukka. Yes, it is a funny Finnish name with lots of case and lots of eyes and um, that that's uh, that stands for someone who came to this country, to the U.S., as a girl from Finland who established herself as an executive coach. I work with teams and executives to make their lives and their work lives better. How did you come to America? Is there a story related to this? The real story starts when I was 13. It was an important sit-down conversation with my father. He was a soldier in, a, in the military, in the Finnish military, and my, my mom worked as a secretary. And mom and dad looked at me and said, I have to tell you something very important. In your life, you will, you cannot look to us to create your dream life. We will never be so wealthy that you would inherit something of real value. What we can do for you is to give you your own experiences that only you own. And they will be something that nobody can ever tax or steal or take away from you. They are yours to keep. And this is what we're going to do. If you're willing, and remember I'm 13, would you like to go to Ireland, Dublin, Ireland for the summer? I just had started to learn some English. So I knew I'm a girl, you are a boy. And that's about it. So off I go with my first passport flying alone to a Dublin to, to stay with a family who my parents had never met, uh, an Irish family that uh, our friends had met abroad. Ever since then, I have looked up in the sky and seen airplanes going somewhere and always wanted to be on them going somewhere, see another country. Eventually, we took out the world map and we decided to leave Finland for our adventure abroad. We studied different cities that we we could live in. And the one city that stood out of everything on the planet Earth was Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon, because we lived in a city called Juvascula in Finland, which is a university mm -hmm. town. We liked the size of it. It felt homey and still full of intellectuals and people who were doing interesting things in their yeah. lives. We wanted something similar, but in America. Two years later, my then a husband um, was called, you know, contacted and asked whether he wanted to come to Eugene, Oregon to teach Finnish at a university. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. No, so this was pure manifestation of Total Eugene. Total manifestation. So if I do that for Mars, Elon's gonna call me and hey, Santi, I'm gonna need you to go to I Mars. I have no though. doubt. Okay. I can't guarantee the time scale. That's okay. But that will happen. And what happened is we had already, he, has, he had already taken a job in Dublin, Ireland. Wow. When they called from the university saying that now we have the funding for you, you can come now. We were already living in Dublin, Ireland. We never ended up in Eugene, Oregon, but the company, which was Microsoft in mm. Dublin, Ireland, transferred him to Redmond, Washington. 
And that's how I came here mm. with him. We drove down to Oregon to, to see what sort of a city is Eugene, Oregon. We really liked it and we were so happy we were in Seattle. Is, is there a, a specific reason why once you got to America, you were adamant in staying here compared mm -hmm. to going back to Finland? That was interesting. It took me about two years to get used to the society and really learn the ways here. I had spent a year here as an exchange student in, in my high school years. Mm. I was not very keen in coming here because that was at a time when a European Union was a big deal for us Finns. Mm. And I was much more interested in the activity in Europe, but you know, because my husband wanted to be here and transfer here. I said, okay, two years, just learning my way to know what's expected, you know, find the home, get the license, driving insurances, learning all that. I was telling myself, remember this, because you will forget mm -hmm. how long it took you to really feel at home here. And I do remember that when I started to listen to NPR and understand the news, that I, I actually got what they were saying. Like, that was interesting to me, much more interesting to, to, than, to, than anything else that mm -hmm. I was listening to. So that's when I felt at home here. We had opportunities to go back every year, eventually, maybe sometimes a couple of times a year. I had work in Finland that I went for a couple of times a year. So it was coming and going, but we loved our new home. Uh, we lived in a beautiful neighborhood. We had new friends. As an adult, you start building your life as, you know, where you are. Eventually it was five years, 10 years, soon it's 20 years, and now I'm heading towards 30 years. You know, when you establish yourself as a professional somewhere, it's hard to leave that behind you. How do you carry on Finnish traditions and Finnishness? It all starts with the language. So we speak Finnish, only Finnish together, when we are just the two of us, you know, Americans around. We had an, a wonderful opportunity here in Seattle. We have the Finnish School of Seattle, and Marcus, my son, was part of that ever since he was a baby an infant. We got very involved in developing the school and making sure that the school is well resourced so that they can do what they know how to do the best. We've been very lucky with um, lots of great teachers there. And so with that, we incorporated a lot of cultural activities through the school community. So the community was emphasizing those Finnish traditions then that we celebrated together with the community but then also at home and I think the traditions and the cultural appreciation comes important when you have kids and because up till that point you kind of take it for granted and it's not that yeah. big of a deal. Yeah. Can you talk about the Finnish school a little bit? Who, who goes there? And I've, I've thought about this for a while now. We here in Seattle, it's a, maybe the most active Finnish community center point. Maybe all kids from infant to 12 who are Finnish born or born to Finnish parents um, try to make it on Thursdays and Saturdays. What makes Finnish people unique, if anything? I do think that the old reputation that Finns have built for themselves is honesty and trustworthiness. It's just so easy to connect with a Finn because you know they keep their word. I trust Finns. It's just easy. It's easy to be with Finns, especially when you are here away from Finland, yeah. where Everybody kind of takes on their best Finnish behavior, I think, to be uh, representing Finland the best way. What does being Finnish mean to you? It defines my identity. You know, every part of my beingness is affected by having been born to Finland and having lived in the kind of at the heart of Finland 
I was born in Helsinki, but most of my life I lived in Tampere area in Hame. So I speak slower. I have my uh, um, my behavior is kind of calm. It's part of me. You can hear it in my language use. It's it's the way I approach things. Finland lives in me as much as I represent Finland. The Finnish qualities, whether they're good or bad, they are with me. Finland pops up in the weirdest ways in American pop culture. Do you have any examples or any fun memories of when Finland's popped up in popular culture or a book or something where you remembered or thought it was a bit funny? Because for our size of a country, we get mentioned oddly a lot. As an honorary consul, I often visit the Scandinavian department at the University of Washington here. Mm -hmm. And there's a small group of fans of Finland who study Finnish as their major. Even my son ended up uh, studying there. And when I get to get a chance to talk to these students, that why on earth Finnish? Mm -hmm. Out of all the languages you could study at the university, why would you choose Finnish? I was so amazed when I heard that so many of them, basically most of them, chose Finnish because of heavy metal music. What? Yes. Do you have an American dream? If it's the the American dream of making it um, on your own, it's not really been a driver for me. My dreams as a professional has always just been in the area of forever learning. And if I can share what I have learned, like what you were just saying, it gives me satisfaction. And if I'm paid to make a living, to do what I love, that's my, I don't know if it's an American dream, it's my dream. How do you think about failure and deal with it? I take failure to heart. It's horrible, horrible. and. I always go back to what can I learn from this? How can I not ever end up in a situation like that again? But it hurts. It's not it's not easy however much I embrace living fascinating, fascinated mm -hmm. and 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 growth mindset. Failing is hard. I always want to do a good, you know, right thing, be good for the betterment of the planet and mm -hmm. people and do good things. If I fail at that as an individual, as a human being, as a professional, it, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. But there's always something to learn and maybe sometimes it takes years to get over on the other side and see what I've gain from it. How do you feel the support networks are here compared to how they were in Finland? And and as an example is when I moved to America at 23 and quit my job and, and left all my friends and family, only a handful, a couple friends were like, this is a no brainer. You should definitely go. Mm. Could, could you talk a little bit about this support network and the differences of it? I think it's super individual based how you build your network to support you. Um, for my clients, I talk about p your power base. Who is who is at your fingertips to call for different things for help, and you know how easily you can you know call on someone to to ask for their help. And if you don't build that consciously, and it's just haphazard. You might end up in a position sometime in your work life or in your all life that you don't have. You think you don't have anybody to call on when you really need them. I encourage people to get really conscious and almost systematic about building their networks. For me, it's worked really well in this country because I've been part of different communities and been in the leadership of different organizations, whether they are business club or organization. But you have to be willing to give your time, your uh, your help. Mm. And, and if you do that first, it might come back to you many fold. And I like that, and, uh, and also giving without expecting anything in return. Absolutely. It's such a beautiful 
thing and I've, I've run to it a couple of times now in the past during the pandemic where I've had friends reach out who feel like I owe them for my, my entire life because they helped me once and for me it's a, a bizarre thing that yeah, you keep... It, that's transactional. Yeah. That's, that's not true. And it's right 10 now. years after the fact and it's just like yeah. if I could help you I probably would have already and you yeah. asking it or framing it this way makes me feel a bit awkward. <laughs> I think if everybody would keep the value of kindness uh, in the forefront of their lives, so much more good things would come to them. What are your thoughts on, on how you need to change your personality or yourself in order to be accepted in, in an American corporate culture, for example? And that's the interesting thing is like, I think I uh, was very outspoken and confident and um, expressive in Finland, but over here, I'm still the reserved, <laughs> quiet. No, I don't get that much anymore, but eh, occasionally, yes. Yeah. It depends on the group where I'm at. People who know me better, they know I'm not very withdrawn. You know, that shy, uh, reserved thin shows up every once in a while. What do I need to do to be in your position in let's say five years? What are some concrete steps that I could take? First of all, you have to say yes. You have to follow life with curiosity and leave judgment. You know, be discerning, but don't judge. Feedback that I get from my clients that I'm most proud of is that they say, I can come to you and never feel judged. And even if I bring some of my, my failures or things that I'm a bit ashamed of, I bring them to you and we strategize and find a way to move on and, and build from there. I'm going back to my motto. It incorporates everything. If you live your life fascinated, you always more curious about people than judge them. You always are learning and you can think about yourself when you have your focus in being fascinated about someone else and being, I call it like taking curiosity to a higher level. That's how I describe being fascinated. And that's what good coaches do. That's a beautiful way of putting it. And now, would you please talk about this? Correct me if I'm wrong, you got this award this year. I actually received it um, on the Independence Day 2020, but but because of COVID, I was mm. not able to receive it concretely, tangibly. Yeah. But you could find me in Helsing in Sanomat on the 6th of uh, December uh, so, last so year. Would you, would you explain for people who don't know what these are and 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 the and one one important uh, difference is that we don't do knighthoods in Finland, and there are multiple levels of the white rose knighthood as well. And I've, I've learned a couple of things before I, I got here. So, but for someone who's never heard of of this, um, what does it? What is it? And uh, how does one? It's really an acknowledgement and recognition of the work that someone does for. For Finland. It was started in, during the war when there wasn't really any way of um, paying money to all the volunteers who put their lives on the line and helped to build the nation. A system of knighthoods uh, that is then awarded to people who have done something exceptional for, for, for Finland. And you got the white rose knighthood. Yes, it's I did. so cool. It yes. just I saw that. I'm like, that has to be one of the coolest sounding names of of knighthood it, to begin with. It is with. really lovely to be the knight of the white rose. The fun fact is that when I came home from the event where I actually then received it at the Nordic uh, National Museum, we had a lovely reception, and you know it was the first party after COVID mm. that we had a gathering about 50 people. I came home and the gate to my house is covered with a, a rose vine. And it was the first day when the white roses were open. It was just so 
amazing and you know miraculous that you know I've just moved into this house. I come home from this event and it's all about white roses and here it is. Even my even my house welcomes me yeah. as a white rose. I don't want to get too spiritual, but I do think that the universe does oddly show us these things oh or we someone told me that oh well you just noticed them because x y and z mm -hmm. but it's some things are just too much of a coincidence it doesn't matter if it's a coincidence it's a lovely coincidence i take it <laughs> i love it i always think of like what are the odds of this happening and then when you go into the mathematics of it it's practically impossible mm -hmm. that that would happen and it just right. happened which is a funny way of the universe messing with you, kind of showing that, <laughs> look, everything is possible. Yeah. Whatever you think isn't, it isn't because you think it isn't. And once right. you open up your mind to it and you say, yes, I can, or yes, yes. I will, then it becomes a reality. So we're going to do a word association test. I'll give you 10 words and then I'll ask you a question to end, end the interview. Are you ready? I am ready. Shoot. First word, blue. Blue sky. White. Finished snow. Sauna. Oh, it's so hot in here. Cecil. Yes, we do have it. Black. Coffee. Green. Forests. Coca-Cola. Oh, so American. The Matrix. Oh, yeah. Blue or red. Finland. My home. Love. I love it. What do you have to say to the next generation of uh, entrepreneurs? I only have one thing to say. Live fascinated. Thank you and thanks for all the time you took for this. Thank you. This is, this is so much fun. Thank you.